My name is McCarthy from Always Home, and this is the second in a series of hurricane preparedness blogs that we have planned for you. Uh, the first one was done by our home care specialist in Hollywood, uh, Florida, and the second one is kind of my uh, preparation list for how you should be thinking about hurricane preparedness here in southwestern Florida. The first and most important thing to do is have a plan. If you don't have a plan already before the hurricane is announced, you have a problem. So I really encourage everybody to think through this subject and do some research on the internet. But here's a couple of points that I think are important. One, first and foremost, if you have any kind of medical condition, make sure you have sufficient medical supplies to take with you, your prescriptions and such. And you should have at least a seven-day supply on hand. You should have food, uh, at least a three-day supply to take with you. Disaster supplies, and we're going to go through a list of some of the things that I have in my preparedness pack, but there are things like flashlights, radios, first aid kits. Have clothing. Uh, and you know a couple changes of clothing and most importantly if it's at winter time and you're subject to any type of cold evenings it'd be great to have a sleeping bag or some type of protective gear that you could put over yourself. Uh, have your car keys and something that a lot of people forget about is your important documents and I'm going to go through some of those that I think you should have also. Um, so after you have your plan and you've kind of organized yourself, you want to think about protecting your home. Um, and the things that you want to do first and foremost is you want to bring in all your lanai patio furniture. Anything that's loose that can be thrown around in a storm, that you want to bring into protective uh, area. In preparing your home, you want to make sure that all of the loose furniture, objects, equipment, are brought into a protective area, preferably your garage, so that the lot of the damage that one encounters is from all this loose material that's being thrown around in a storm. Leave your trees and shrubs alone, and there's only one exception to that. If you have heavily fruit-laden trees, it's probably a good idea to actually get that fruit off the tree. But don't try to, you know, get rid of limbs and things like that because nobody's going to come around and pick those up. Um, look, look for potential hazards and that's something you should do even before the storm. Before you evacuate there are three items that you should turn off. Your water, your electricity, and your propane. The one thing you do not want to turn off is your natural gas because when you get back in in order to turn that back on, you can't do that yourself. You have to call out a utility service man to turn your gas back on. So I recommend you leave that on, but turn the propane off. If, if you're concerned about storm surge and flooding, um, it takes about two people one hour to do and fill 100 sandbags. And 100 sandbags will be about 20 feet in length and about one foot high. And if you're in a surge area, that can really do a lot to protect your home. Of course, you have to have the materials available ahead of time in order to do that. Um, the, the issues in your home. A lot of people are under the misapprehension that pressure builds up inside the home and that's what causes damage in a hurricane storm. That is not the case. What you're trying to do is prevent these, the wind from getting inside the home. And that's why we use storm shutters, in order to take those vulnerable uh, places in your home and cover those. Uh, I encourage you not to use plywood. That's really the last ditched resort. You really want to have appropriately manufactured and installed hurricane shutters to protect your windows and openings, including the garage. Uh, we have our preferred service provider that does an excellent job, and that's Janssen Shutters and Windows here in the Sarasota area, uh, but there are others. Those, sometimes people think that taping the windows is going to benefit them. It generally, the only thing that taping does would cut, keep the glass from shattering. Um, it is not really recommended to do that in a hurricane because it will not protect the window from blowing in and getting the wind inside your home. Protect your valuables. One thing, you can either take them with you or put them in a safe place. Um, 
Another preventative idea that a lot of people talk about but rarely do, and which is really important, is take an inventory of the items in your home. There are many ways to do this. You can have a written inventory, and if you do that, I suggest you put serial numbers of important things down. Uh, you can take pictures of the things inside your home, and that's, I'm talking furniture and pictures and valuables and electronics and all those, or the easiest way is often to videotape. Um, the items in your home and there are several firms in Sarasota that will do this for you at a very affordable price. The next thing I would recommend and many of us don't think about this is actually check in your local area. There are two things you should understand. One, this is uh, Sarasota's evacuation areas and there are various levels of evacuation that they would, they would uh, designate. Clearly, those areas closest to the water are going to get the highest surge. And surge is an ex extremely important thing. Flood surge is the most critical item that you have to be concerned about. In hurricanes, 9 out of 10 deaths occur because of flood surge, not because of the winds and the falling debris that comes from that. So being aware of what area you're in is extremely important. So Areas like Siesta Key, Lido Key, Longboat, uh, Casey Key, those are going to be your most vulnerable areas. And those are the areas that ought to be considered evacuating first. If for any reason you're living in a mobile home or an RV, you must evacuate as soon as you hear about any type of hurricane coming in because they are the most vulnerable type of facilities. The the, the surge uh, that comes from the water, the salt water areas, uh, range in a category one to possibly up to five to six feet to up to category five the surge can be as much as 19 feet high so you can imagine how far inland that can really carry and it theoretically could move in the Sarasota area all the way over to highway 75 so be particularly aware of these areas and know your evacuation routes. Here, for example, is an evacuation route map for Sarasota telling you, depending upon where you live, how you would exit the area and get out of the area so you don't have to worry about the flood surge. One thing in preparation before we get into the supplies that you should have on hand is about your automobile. Um, when I've been caught in areas where there's hurricane alerts, uh, I once got caught in Key West, the first thing that crossed my mind was get your gas tank filled. And that is great advice. You don't want to be running out of gas on your way out of town because you may be in a lot of traffic and what you may think is a half hour trip could turn into a three hour trip. So let's take a couple minutes now and look at my hurricane preparedness pack. Here are some basic medical supplies. If you have prescriptions, as I mentioned before, those should be included in here. I have everything from Blistix to Neosporin, Advil, uh, Bayer Aspirin, Excedrin. Uh, of course, a first aid kit, and depending upon what your medical emergency, this would be a small one. This is a larger one that we keep in our house. Flashlights with, of course, batteries to go along with that. Poncho, compass, camera, um, I happen to like Surefire lights. They're compact and very strong, but you must keep extra lithium batteries for that. Always take cash as well as credit cards with you and your driver's license. Extra reading glasses, sunglasses. Always have a knife. Uh, this is also a fire starter right here. Your checkbook, gloves, and they should be fire resistant. Um, other types of knives that you could have. These are food packs. These are light sticks that you can use in an emergency. This is an aluminum um, heat uh, blanket in case you get caught in a cold area. Sanitary uh, type items for keeping yourself clean. Uh, radio is extremely important and here is a battery run radio. Uh, this is the one I suggest and the one I can use that you can get from the Red Cross that also is solar powered. You can also crank it to give it power. You can get the NOAA channels so that you know what's going on with the weather. And on the back of it, you can hook up your cell phone and recharge it. So you're almost self-contained. 
If you want to go all the way, this is my satellite phone. If cell phone towers are out, this, the satellite phones will still operate and you can keep it for an emergency. Um, last thing I want to mention is pets. Often we forget about our pets, but we must have enough food for your pets for at least three days in a water bowl, and they're also going to need water also. Uh, last items, uh, mask in case you get into a contaminated area, and of course I always take duct tape with me because you never know when that's going to be useful for you. Finally, I just wanted to point out this is where we keep all our important documents. In addition to taking your driver's license and social security, uh, there are a lot of documents you really ought to take with you, and that includes if you have stock certificates, things like that you should take with you, uh, your most current tax return, um, proof of residency, uh, insurance policies, and medical records. Uh, you may also have other documents that you think are important, those should also be taken, and you keep those with your pack so you can grab them and immediately go out the door. So. That's my quick and dirty for this week on hurricane preparedness and next week we'll be on to our third in a series of hurricane preparedness talks. Yeah.